Greetings, and welcome to Curious Moran Land. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, a couple of videos, and this first one actually will not show the actual skulls. It's That's going to be my next video. This one, I'm just going to make some practice slides for my students. So, again, so this is going to, I call this Skull Bones and Bone Markings uh, Practice Slides, brought to you by Curious Moran Land. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show a blank slide, talk about it, and then show the answer, show the blank slide, and then talk about it. And my, I would expect my students to maybe use this to um, as a review for, say, a quiz, and then I'll, the more elaborate one will show what they need to do for their lab practical. All right, so let's begin. Now, what are we looking at? So we're looking at a superior view, and you can identify a bone here, a bone here, a bone here, and actually one here. So this would be your frontal bone your parietal bones, and your occipital bone. You can also see a suture, and now a suture is a connection point between two bones, and they allow for play, especially when during embryonic development and also fetal development, and actually after a child's born as well. So uh, this would be the coronal, imagine a coronal section. This would be a sagittal, and this back here is called the lambdoidal. All right. So let's move, let's double check, make sure I was right. Okay. A um, couple other things you can see there. So let's Again, the purpose is to do a quick little slide action. I might do some extra stuff at the end, so here we go. All right, posterior view. You sh I think you can see this lambdoidal um, suture. You can see the coronal. There's one over here on this side that will, hmm, that's actually connecting with the temporal bone. And so let's see, uh, you got, I see you see the mandible. You don't see any eyes, so you know you're a posterior view. And this one, Take a wild guess. This is the zygomatic bone. Okay. Now, I didn't identify the temporal, but I was pointing at the suture there. All right. There's some other things. So I, with the next couple slides, we'll add in these um, bone markings. We're talking about protrusions. We're talking about foramen. We're talking about process or processes. All right. So this actually was the zygomatic arch. And if you look at the occipital bone, you see the occipital condyle the external occipital protuberance. If I actually point here, I'm probably going to make my students just know occipital bone. If I point here, I'm thinking occipital bone. So let's go ahead and look at a, all right, what view is this? So this should be, as it says, a lateral view. And you're going to see, of course, your frontal bone, your parietal again, your occipital. Look at the temporal bone. It's all of this. This suture here, right? There's a suture here. There's a suture there. This is actually called the squamous suture. Squamous suture. Here's the lambdoidal. And you can see the zygomatic bone. You can see th how the zygomatic bone connects with this. And one little one that you might be hard to see is the actual sphenoid bone. This is going to run all the way across. You're going to get several looks at the sphenoid bone. It's harder to see because the body of it is in the floor of the cranial ca cavity. So we need to do a transverse section and pull this top off and look at it superiorly or inferiorly to get an idea of uh, the magnitude of the sphenoid bone. Here's your nasal bone, maxillary bone. So here we go. Let me move me out of the way. Um, so I would mention the squamous suture. This part of the temporal bone is flat, like a, like you know, remember squamous cells. Okay. There's some other stuff in here we should probably take a look at. The again bone markings. So. I mentioned the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. Here is the temporal pro uh, zygomatic process of the, uh, the, I'm sorry, this is the temporal process of the zygomatic bone. Remember, this, they're kind of switched. Zygomatic process of the temporal bone. The, this collectively makes what's called the zygomatic arch. Okay, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much, we're starting to see some repeats here. So now let's get a frontal view and we'll look at, um, we'll get a, do a frontal view and we'll actually see the nasal bone, the lacrimal bone. Actually the lacrimal bone is kind of interesting. It's actually in the orbit. The nasal bone, it goes nasal, um, lacrimal, and then, I'm sorry, nasal, maxillary, and then lacrimal, and then ethmoid, which we haven't seen yet. Okay, as the continue of what I was just saying, uh, they again they color coded it so there's orange, Okay, so you see the sphenoid. Sphenoid just runs all the way across. There's a big superorbital fissure right here. So let's go back to what I said on the last slide. Nasal, maxillary, lacrimal, and this sphenoid's in the back wall. In between that is the ethmoid bone. 
Um, there's a couple other things we should probably point out. You can still see, you know, I don't want to keep saying the same things, but so here's your mental uh, foramen. There's a, there's a vessel that pops through there. This is, of course, the mandible. Um, another look at the zygoma, zygo, zyg, zygomatic bone. And there's some foramen here, foramen here, supraorbital fissure. And then in here, you got the inferior nasal conchi. This would be, there's a me medial and a middle and the superior. So this is the one that I usually ask on the quiz. And then right here, there's this is the vomer. We're going to have to see that in a couple different views. It's one of the hardest ones to identify. All right, so let's make sure I was correct. Yeah, we called it the inferior nasal conchi. There's your lacrimal bone. The lacrimal bone is going to be lateral to the maxillary bone. And the most central line is going to be the nasal. So technically, the maxillary bone is, is lateral to the nasal, nasal bone. All right, and then, of course, there's the sphenoid here, here. There's a fissure there. That's where the supraorbital fissure is going to be. All right, so there's a couple other things in here we sh should be able to see. Um, I mean, so just pause the video if you want to uh, take a look. So let's move on to another video. All right, inside the floor, you've got to do a cross section, a transverse section, pull that ca cranial cap off. Now we're looking at what's called the cranial floor. And you can see part of the ethmoid bone, but this right here is the cribriform plate. This is still frontal bone. There's your frontal sinus. This is the sphenoid with the silica tersica where your um, pituitary gland hides in. And there's some foramen there that we need to identify. So first, if it's in the sphenoid bone, it's going to be the foramen ovale. Down here, the, oh, actually over here, the gap between the sphenoid bone and the temporal bone are some other ones that you can look for. But down here, where the temporal bone articulates with the occipital bone is the should be the jugular foramen. And I always expect students to be able to see that. Um, so, so you see the temporal bone, sphenoid. Uh, this is the parietal. This is the occipital. Obviously, you can't see the. Um, I'm, I said parietal, didn't I? I meant to say frontal. This is the frontal bone over here. Okay, let's make sure we've got. Got everything. So I mentioned the ethmoid bone is the whole area, but if I'm pointing here, I'm usually pointing to the cribriform plate. Okay, so there again, there's the frontal bone, sphenoid, you can see all those. Anything else I didn't mention? All right. And I did mention the um, foramen of valley, follow that. That's in the, again in the sphenoid bone. And see the jugular foramen. You notice the jugular foramen is closer to the foramen magnum, and that's what and then you see where the temporal bone, there's, it's actually opening. It's not, um, you'll see that there's a connection point there. All right, so let's see. Let's move on. The inferior view. All right. This should be, find the little spot where the temporal, all right, you, you should see the occipital condyle, frame and magnet again. Here's the vomer which I'm going to show you a close-up, a side view from a mid-sagittal view, and then pulling that part out. So here's your palatine bone, all right? And again, this is still the maxillary bone. Uh, I will, I want to show the answer, so. All right, um, I would, didn't mention the, the jugular frame, and when you're on an inferior view, the jugular frame is easier to see. It's by the occipital condyle of the occipital bone, but it's also really close to the spinous process, the spinous process of the temporal bone. Okay, so here's the vomer. You would have to remove the, the mandible to actually see it from this view, but that's what we're looking at. Um, I'm missing foramen ovale, so it should be right here. See this in the sphenoid bone? All right, so let's go ahead and zoom in here. All right, so this is, what I'm showing you here is, again, the nasal bone, maxillary, lacrimal. Inside the lacrimal is a canal. It's called the lacrimal duct. That's uh, basically, the nasal lacrimal duct is what it's called, and that's where when you tear up, that's where it is. You can see, we'll get into that later. So here's the zy uh, zygomatic bone. This is the frontal bone. So you see all these bones make up the orbit, which is the eye. All right, let's see if I left anything out. You can, again, see that superior orbiter f orbital fissure. Um, you see the ethmoid bone. So if you follow it, nasal, maxillary, lacrimal, ethmoid bone, which when we pulled that cap off, we could see the Christogala run up there. And there's uh, a couple other things that's pretty interesting. Uh, you actually see a bit of the palatine bone from within the orbit. 
Okay. Now, if you look over here at this, we pull this out, we're actually going to see uh, some parts, the nasal septum, which is part of the ethmoid bone. This right here is cartilage, so you don't always, you won't see this in a bone. All right, there's no cartilage in the skeletal bones that we're looking at. And, and here is the vomer. So I wanted to point this out. Um, some of our looks show you this, some don't. So, and then these conchi are these little protrusions right here. Um, you can see the nasal conchi. So there's the superior, and then down here is the inferior, which we looked at from a uh, frontal view, uh, a frontal anterior view is what I should have said. All right, so just to zoom in there, zoom in here. I think there's some repeats here. Um, I'm actually showing you this again so you can see the vomer. If you, rem you have an inferior view and you remove the mandible, embedded in the sphenoid bone, you'll see the vomer, which you can actually, again, sometimes see here from a side view, or this would be a medial view. We've done, this is a deep medial view. All right. And I think I showed this already. So what I call the closer look, I want to close this video by giving you a couple of zoom ins and other looks. And what I want you to do is let's take a look. There's, I'm not going to do, um, you know, unlabeled and unlabeled. But here's, all right, so here's a couple of different ways of looking at uh, different bones here. All right, so if you look at the temporal bone, if you pull this out, look, look at all the different views. So here's a medial view. Here's a disarticulated, meaning it's been pulled out of the skull. All right. So this, the lateral view, if you were to flip that around, here is the medial view as you go inside here. And you'll see, you can see the mastoid process. You can see the squamous portion. You can, you can be very detailed with all these bones. But you know, we would expect you to do like external acoustic meatus. Right, that's where you, you know, think about your, OK. Uh, frontal bone. Notice when you look at the anterior view, this is a lateral view. This is a superior view. Again, an anterior view. So we're taking that skull. In this particular case, we're taking to take the skull, and we're going to rotate. So we're taking the skull. Right? We looked at a frontal view. We're looking just at this bone. Pull the cap off. We're looking deep inside, and then we're kind of looking at the side there. All right. Now, really, for most of my students, if you want to stop the video now, go ahead. Um, this is uh, just added views. The earlier slides are ones you should study for the quiz. Okay. Uh, here's the sphenoid. Again, there's the lateral view, inferior, superior view. I have it a couple times. Uh, here's the occipital bone. This is interesting. So here's a lateral view. You see it on the side. Inferior, you see it there. Take the, look at the cranial floor. That means you remove that cap, and you look straight down, and you see the occipital bone there. And some of these views are going to help out when we actually look at the actual little skulls. So, all right, let's go ahead and uh, make a little. All right, let's keep moving around here. And I think that's pretty much it. Here's a good maxillary view. And just zoom in on the lacrimal bone. All right, so when you're looking at this, right, sorry, I had to turn the lights back on. So when you're looking at this video, pause as you're looking at it and say, look at the unlabeled ones. Do what you can. Then look at it with my narration, or you can mute it if you want to hear me. That's fine. All right, so that's pretty much it. And brought to you by Kirish Moran then. The next video is going to go in, kind of repeat the same thing, but this time I'm going to be doing two things. I'm going to be showing you and using my probes and pointing out, like, for example, there's the supraorbital fissure, right? But I have to kind of do this at another location so you can actually see what's going on. All right. Thanks for watching.